just what I said Well, I'd shout out an order I think we're out of this man Get me some Boy, don't make me wanna change my growing up, my reading material was largely influenced by the popular culture of the time, which in my case was the 90s. Olsen and Olsen Mystery Agency will solve any crime by dinner time. Mary-Kate and Ashley. These girls are my age. Full House began when I was a baby and ran all throughout my childhood. I watched every movie, every TV show. I had their calendars, their magazines, their makeup line, their stickers, their Game Boy games, their Barbie dolls, and I read every book. If Mary-Kate and Ashley were on it, I had it, I read it, I loved it. So is this any sort of high quality literature? No, of course not. But I would beg my mom to let me stay up past my bedtime so I could read these books. And that makes these books important. <laughs> my mom and I never had cable, so it was always a huge treat to go to someone else's house and get to see Alex Mack. But with the books, I could keep her with me all the time. Oh, I forgot the hat. I also dressed like her all the time, so Alex was always with me. Sabrina was a huge part of Friday night at our house. Our neighbor Liz, she would come over for TGIF with my mom and me, and TGIF was Family Matters, Step by Step, Boy Meets World, Full House, all the good stuff. And a TGIF staple in the late 90s was Sabrina. And since I couldn't be waiting until Friday nights for my Sabrina fix, the books became my best friends. Replica by Marilyn Kay. I remember going to Walden Kids like every week to get new installment in the series because I was going through the them so quickly and I don't know why I picked them up they just called to me about a girl who discovers that she's a clone I just remember them being highly entertaining I couldn't put them down and this really piqued my interest in science fiction well I guess Alex Mack as well The Face on the Milk Carton by Caroline B. Cooney it was such an exciting mystery and I loved it so much The Wayside School Books my second grade teacher used to read these to us these books are crazy they're so ridiculous and they're so much fun I somehow lost my copy of Wayside School gets a little stranger. It was glow in the dark. The stranger, the word stranger, was glow in the dark lettering and it was so cool and now the books don't look like this anymore and I'm so sad. Also in the 90s we had some awesome adaptations. We got Matilda and we got Harriet. I was obsessed with these girls. You notice that how obsessed I was with everything? I have a very obsessive personality. I tried to hone my own telekinesis powers and I even started my own private spy journal. I tried to spy on the neighbors but I never really saw any Anything good. So I just started making up stuff, which really helped jumpstart my writing career. Matilda was a strong little girl who overcame a horrific situation through a great love of books, and Harriet was a writer. I was so inspired by both of them. I just recently got this beautiful edition of Matilda. Glorious. Can't forget the Babysitter's Club or The Sweet Valley Girls. And then, as I got a little bit older, Roswell and Charmed. This seemed like a good idea at the time. These shows are my favorite shows of all time, along with Gilmore Girls, of course. I was, guess what? I was obsessed. If I wasn't watching them, I was thinking about them, or writing my own stories about them, or cutting out pictures of them and plastering them all over my school books. I was Liz Parker for Halloween, so of course I got my hands on all the tie-ins I could find. I am not a fan of graphic novels or comics or anything like that, but when they released these, I could not resist. They're so beautiful, and they continue with the storyline after the series officially ended on the WB. Oh, the late great WB. And yeah, I still have that magazine from 2001 when Rose replaced Shannon. Seventh grade was an exceptional English class year. I enjoyed almost every book we read. This is required reading I'm talking about. But two books in particular stood out to me more than any other, and they were Tuck Everlasting and The Thief of Always. Tuck 
was fascinating to me. The whole idea of living forever, what it really means to be alive if there is no death. I actually love the movie more than the book. They upped Winnie's age, which allowed for more of a romantic angle between Winnie and Jesse. I felt like it was more powerful that way for me, personally. And then there was Thief of Always, which is a horror story for kids about a soul-sucking magic house. And it was so exciting and so unlike anything we ever read in school. And it also had a really strong message. And of course the incomparable Shel Silverstein, who was my first real introduction to poetry. The Ramona series by Beverly Cleary. These books are what really got me excited about reading. My mom used to take me to the library and I would get the audio cassette, the original audiobooks. We would go on five hour long road trips and my mom would have to pry me out of the car because all I wanted to do was sit in my car seat and listen to Stockard Channing read to me. Apparently I used to like to deface my books as well. Way to go! Thanks Barbie! Get off my books. My Free Willy book also came with a cassette that I don't have here in Florida with me, but Jason James Richter read this book and recorded it on that audio cassette, so I used to listen to his cute little voice and read along with the story that I loved so much. Also, when I was little, our neighbor used to give me a Walden Books gift card every year for my birthday for a day of book shopping and ice cream. It's such a special memory to me. R.I.P. Walden Books. And of course, there's the best day of every school year, Scholastic Book Fair Day. Even my most beloved doll came with a set of books. I really think that Samantha was the beginning of my love for historical fiction. There were others, but I feel like those pretty much cover the gist of what I read when I was younger. I'm forever grateful to each one of these authors and the TV show creators, my teachers, my friends, and my mom for keeping my love of reading alive because I really couldn't imagine life without it. Thanks for watching, guys. I would love to know what some of your childhood favorites are. Bye!